Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Tart. Hello, sparkly people. Today, I'm gonna to have a little bit of a play with some Yupo paper, and this is just a blank white pad of Yupo, and some of the Jane Davenport Incredible Inks. Now, I haven't used these on here before, so we're gonna have a bit of a test run together and see how they work. Now, I've just popped the piece of Yupo paper in a marbling tray. This just helps stop it getting too messy on my desk. And the first thing I'm going to do is give my inks a bit of a shake. Now, there's no sparkly bits or anything in here to get messed up, but just to make sure that they're nice and well blended. Now, I've got seven colors here. Just so that the inks will move around, I've just wet the surface relatively um, evenly. And I'm just going to drip these on. Now they're quite intense, so I might not need all that much. Oh, so pretty. So that one was fresh air, and I know you can't smell these because you're not in the room with me, but they're scented and they're so pretty. That's watermelon. The next one is lemon or lemon sherbet. Oh, as brat. Oh, I'm just going to flick some of that over the top. That's so pretty. Oh. Oh goodness, this isn't going to take much to become addictive. Wow. Okay, this one's blueberry. Now, I haven't even got any ink in the dropper here. I'm just grabbing whatever's come off. Oops, let's do a bigger one. Oh, that smells divine. Now, if it's not moving enough, you might need to add some more water. Next is berrylicious. Oh, this is strong. I might just tip as much out of that as I can. Oh, when I say strong, I mean ex um, I have some mermaid teal because we may as well go for it at this point. Now I'm just going to add it where I know it will look good, which is with that lemon. Maybe where some of the water still is. Ooh, I love how they sort of move across the Yupo. That's so cool. Now remember, I wet the Yupo first. So they might not react this way without that additional water. And this last one is violet syrup. I've got some beautiful color blooms here. And I might just drip some of that yellow in the middle of some of these just to make it that little bit more interesting. And of course I can always spray with a little bit more water. Now this could really make everything kind of go, mm, we'll find out. So I'm just spraying from a distance. Ooh, okay, that was just like one squirt. Let me get this close. And you can see on the bits where it's dried, it's made little watermarks. It's pretty cool. Now this Yupo will take a while to dry because it is not porous. It's a non-absorbent paper. So as long as I don't tilt and mess with it, it should dry reasonably sort of like this. But do I want it to? I don't know. Now the other thing I've got here is some pearlescent liquid acrylic. And this one's from Dale Rowney. Because you know I like my sparkles. I don't know if this is going to work well or not. But now for that to become more liquid, I'm just going to need to spray it with some water. Now, I don't know how to tell you exactly how much I like this section just here right now, but it's a lot. All right, so I've just carefully slid this off the background and onto a clean piece of paper, just so it doesn't keep wicking sort of the corners here. And it's starting to look really yummy. But I think I need to do something in these larger areas here where it's sort of a bit empty and single colored, but I don't want to do too much. So <laughs> bit of a fine balancing act here. The gold's looking really great. It's sort of spreading into the other colors after adding that water. All right, so what I've got here is some alcohol um, colorless blender in a mini mister. Do not use your Ranger blending ink for this because it has got a warning on the side of it and it says do not spray because it can affect your eyes. So I've actually got the Copic colorless blender in here. You can also use a vodka or rubbing alcohol if you've got that. And I'm going to spray it over the top. Now these, because they're like watercolors, should react a little bit with this alcohol and get little patterns. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> well, it certainly does. All right, so I'm gonna spray from a much, wow. You can spray from a much higher elevation. So this was right up near the camera. And that's actually really pretty. Now it works better on the areas that have semi-dried or at least don't have as much liquid. You can see that 
it's been sprayed over here where it's still quite wet and it's made almost no impact apart from a few little bubbles where it's sort of spread it out but that looks pretty cool now I'm going to try and dry this with a heat gun see how that goes and if you get any of these little dark corners like I've got here just grab a paper towel and touch the paper towel to the corner to draw away some of the liquid and that'll stop you getting sort of little brown bits now that beautiful um, pearlescent acrylic I've used has mixed with the purple and made this stunning sunset color down the bottom here I'll have to find a way to make use of that now applying color with a heat tool a heat gun will actually blow some of these liquidy areas around so if you'd like to retain more pattern just let it air dry um, depending on what you've used and how wet it is sometimes that makes the colors bleed into each other even more so it's kind of a hit and miss kind of procedure Oh my goodness, heating these up as they dry, it smells amazing. I'm sure that's, that's not what it's supposed to be there for, but that's pretty great. <laughs> now this is actually drying with a lot more pattern um, using the heat gun than I was expecting. And it must be the Yupo paper. Oops, too, hope, too close with the heat gun there, and it's kind of buckling a little. Okay, so lesson learned. A little helpful drying with the heat gun is fantastic. Get too close and the paper will buckle like it's plastic. So I'm just going to blot a few more of these corners off so it dries a little bit quicker and then leave the rest of that to air dry. And yes, it really does look as awesome off camera as that does on camera. That is just so super pretty. So the Yupo has dried and what I've had to do is in some areas it's sort of remained, it's not wet, but it's definitely movable on the surface. So I've just blotted it with paper towel. The colors are beautiful and bright and I've got a little bit of shimmer in places from the liquid acrylic and it's so pretty. I love some of these little areas here. It's just Really interesting to look at so I want to do something that exposes the background now because I've overcooked the Yupo slightly just when I heated it I need to chop off the little area that is sort of buckled okay so I now have a beautiful square even if it is a little bit warped so what I'll do is I'll put some double-sided tape on the back and stick this to a piece of thicker cardstock so it stays nice and flat Oh, okay. That paper towel has made some interesting patterns in my background. And whilst I could be bothered, I actually like it. Now that my little panel um, is dry on the backing card, I've taken it outside and sprayed with some crystal clear. Now, I should have done this a lot earlier and I'll show you why because every time this surface touched something it would lose a little bit of color and become more pastel so this was the original piece that I had cut off my card and you can see how much paler the colors are because it's touched several pieces of paper it's touched the cutting mat and the cutting board and each time it touched something it's lost a little color now that's not upsetting me because I have a beautiful background here but if you would like to keep your colors nice and bright on the Yupo spray with a permanent acrylic uh, varnish because if you spray with a water-based one it will reactivate the inks and make a mess of your background so something to note so if you would like a pale background just sort of turn this upside down and almost blot it on several bits of scrap paper if you would like to keep it nice and bright spray much more quickly once the initial inks are dry I don't know if I'm going to use this bit or not yet so now all I need to do is trim this to size and make sure it's square and I'm ready to use this as my backing panel now I needed something beautiful and colorful to use with my background and I just happen to have some of these gorgeous Jane Davenport washi sheets now this one is washi girls and it has four sheets but they're the same so I get two of these and two of these now I could have used any of these images because they are just gorgeous but what I've done 
it's really difficult to tell what's going to work unless you cut it out. So I've chopped up my washi sheets and cut some of the individual images out. And then all you need to do is audition them on your background to see what works. Now that looks gorgeous, but Danny, my Lulu art teamy, has just used this on her gorgeous project a week or two ago. So maybe not that one. Not because it's not beautiful, just because I thought you might like to see something different. This one works, but I think it's a little bit large and it takes over the background. And again, the same for this one. So to make that work, I'd have to chop off half of her beautiful hair. Uh, otherwise, it really sort of dominates and it's not quite the right color. And then I tried this one and I think that's looking pretty perfect. So I'm gonna use this as the main image on my card. So now that I've got this element, I just have to figure out what else I'm going to put around it. And I've been trying out some of my Jane Davenport dyes and I think some of these, if I add a little color, might be just what it needs. All right, so I have three colors of embossing powder here. I have Clearly Clear, Prima Donna Purple, and Guten Tag Teal. So I've got purple, turquoise, and clear. So I'm going to make different colors on the different elements. So I'm just going to grab my Jean Davenport Celestial Sky Markers and grab the gold. Give it a little bit of a swish. So I'm going to color two of these in with the gold and then pour the clear embossing powder over the top. And this is the Guten Tag Teal. And lucky last, the Prima Donna Purple. And now I have three gorgeous colored embellishments in gold, purple, and turquoise to match my background. At this point, it's time to construct the card from the background that we've created. And I've trimmed a Jane Davenport washi sheet image from the Washi Girls sheets to card size. I've embossed a bunch of gorgeous die cuts from Spellbinders, again, part of the Artemology Jane Davenport range. And now I'm just going to add a few stamps to the background. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just grab a pencil and pop a very brief outline of where my little design will be sitting. Now all I need is a little bit of paper to mask off this area. I'm just going to add this roughly in the right spot. As it's time to add the finishing touches to that gorgeous, gorgeous background. I'm going to add a little bit of stamping to the background using some archival ink and a few stamps. Darken the edges using the archival ink. It's better to add more uh, layers of this than it is to make a big mess to start with. So start lightly and then just add more ink as necessary. Now you'll find adding a dark ink edge around the beautiful bright colors makes them look a lot brighter. It looks gorgeous. Now it's time to add some embellishments. So I'm going to add a little bit of ribbon. I'm going to add two layers, one just across the bottom here and make a little tab on it. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to get some gold foil and just press it over the top of these glue dots. Now it's time to add your chain girl to the front here. Just line it up. You can see where it's going to fit beautifully and it'll have two different sides to the card. Just carefully peel the washi sheet from the backing. Time to add the next element. Just got a little piece of aqua string here. Now it's time to add some of those embossed elements. Now time to make the image stand out a little bit more by adding some paint over pens. And I also have a water brush at the ready just to blend any of it out in case it's a little bit too strong in color. Make sure to blend it before it dries so that the colors merge together a little. Now putting this around the edges sort of makes the color we can bleed, but it's caught by the edge of that embossed shape. So it gives a really pretty effect and just sort of looks a bit like a wing is what I'm hoping. Now I'm just going to add a hint of that to some of these other areas as well. Just to help accent the shape. If it's too dark, just grab the water brush and move the colour around a little. 
Now once that first layer of paint over paint is dry, you can add a second layer if you like. Just to finish this layer off, I'm going to add some black fine liner. You know how I love this stuff. I'm just going to have to be really careful. Once you've got all of the embellishments added to the background, it's time to add your panel to a piece of white cardstock to really highlight how it looks and all finished. Now, when you hold it in one light, you've got this beautiful, gorgeous Jane girl really coming to the foreground. And when you tilt it, you've got the shimmer from the background that just looks amazing from those incredible inks and the Yupo paper. So I hope you've enjoyed this idea for a Jane Davenport card using, of course, Jane Davenport supplies. And I'll be back with more soon. Bye.